So of course, once I had this compost, the USDA wanted to know, well, how does it affect plant growth? So I got eight other composts that were available in Las Cruces and compared it to two that I produced in the, our bioreactor. This one, four months previous to the analysis, was watered daily to flow through. I wanted to see, okay, just how well does this hold nutrients? You know, are you losing nutrients uh, through water going through the process? As you can see, we had twice the growth of any other the compost available. We did several tests on this compost, to, or all these composts, to see what the inorganic nutrient contents, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, organic matter. We also did a biological test to see what the fungal mass, what the ba bacterial biomass was. And also in that, with those two, we could, could give you the fungal to bacterial ratio. As you can see, there was no correlation to plant growth with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, or organic matter. What did correlate was fungal to bacterial ratio. So this put us on to the next analysis. Of, we were not expecting this, so the next experiment, we looked at growing chili plants with increasing quantities of this compost in a, what we started off with, a, a sand-based mixture to see what the influence of a fungal to bacterial ratio was. In these reactors, there was not a great change in the biomass of the bacteria. You can see 0.31 increasing to 0.35. Fungi, there was a 100 times increase from 0.01 to 1.29, a little over 100. So our fungal to bacterial ratio in these was 0.04 to 3.68. If for no other reason that you do this, that you start to improve your soil carbon and move this biology in the right direction, this should give you enough indication of what you're going to see in your producti productivity. You can see in a poor bacterial dominant soil, okay, agriculture is right in here, you get very little carbon flow into the plant structure. This is root carbon, shoot carbon, and fruit carbon of the plant. As you increase that fungal to bacterial ratio, and as you increase your soil organic matter, you get a linear increase in your productivity. As far as the amount of soil carbon that's going, in, amount of carbon that's going into the soil that the plant is fixing, you can see there's a significant amount in these areas here, and it starts to taper off. This is an intelligent system. It can sense what is there, and it can divert the carbon that it captures from the sun to whatever partition that it seems is most necessary. You see there's a change here at about 3% soil organic matter. You see, it's reached a maxima as far as the amount of carbon it's putting in the soil, but it's decreasing from that point forward. I'll put all these together here in just a second to show you. You have to notice that this is also happening at a fungal to bacterial ratio of 1.6, which is indicative of, of the of Elaine Ingham's hypothesis of how this works. As far as soil respiration, the soils are a living, breathing organism just like us. For our, us to do our metabolic processes, we breathe in oxygen and we exhale CO2. Soils are no different. This is the other animal on your ranch or farm that you need to consider as to, to take care of it. In the average uh, microbiology in a soil, it's equal to about a cow and calf pair for every acre, or about two and a half cows on two and a half calves per hectare. Respiration increased up to a point and plateaued. This will be indicative of improving carbon use efficiency in the system, and I'll show you that just a little later. But again, it's all happening at 1.6 as far as fungal bacterial ratio, and 3% soil organic matter. 
putting all this together, you can see the productivity, the amount of carbon that that plant was able to capture. You can see in a poor soil, the efficiency of carbon capture is low, but it improves every time you increase. But you will reach a maxima, and that maxima starts about 3% at the 3% soil to get matter. And this is an observation by many farmers and ranchers that once their soil hits 3% soil organic matter, they see a change in the dynamics of how a plant will grow. Again, 1.6 on the fungal bacterial ratio. This line here indicates the amount of carbon that plant captured that went back into the soil. In a poor soil, a bacterial dominant soil, 96% of the carbon that plant captured went back into the soil. Now for a plant to invest that much of its carbon reserves, there must be a reason why it's shoveling it into the soil. As you can see, even in the most fertile soil, we still had 46% of the carbon that plant captured go into the soil. Again, 3% soil organic matter, productivity maxima occurs, so you're, you've reached that maximum efficiency that this system can capture carbon. Also, in this experiment, we noticed that our nitrogen was accumulating. And this can only happen if there are free-living nitrogen-fixing bacteria in this system, because the plant we used was a chili plant. The chili plant does this not nodulate, and it's not known to associate with free-living nitrogen-fixing bacteria. But in the right system, with the right microbes, this is what we observed. The nitrogen going into the soil was significant, up to 3% soil organic matter, also 1.6 on your fungal bacterial ratio. This is why I'm saying this is an intelligent system. Nitrogen is extremely critical to grow a plant, but it can tell at this point, it had put enough energy into nitrogen fixation that it could start to reduce that amount of energy. Now realize that nitrogen fixation is a very energy intensive process. It's one of the few elements, nitrogen on, on this earth, that has a triple uh, chemical bond, which it takes a lot of energy to break that bond. So it takes about from six to 12 units of carbon to make every nitrogen available to a plant. Putting this into a pie chart to look at the efficiency of carbon flow, in our fungal to bacterial ratio of 0.04, only 3% of the energy that plant captured went towards the plant. At fungal to bacterial ratio of 0.84, 17%. So if agriculture's in here, you're only doing from 3 to 17% conversion efficiency in your soils. As you improve your soils, you change the fungal to bacterial ratio, you increase the carbon in that soil. You can see 21% at 1.6, 30%, 37%, up to 56% conversion of that carbon to plant material, which is, this is where you want to be. You can see there's a lot of room for improvement in our agricultural systems. Mm -hmm.